Hello and welcome to my first official vlog. You've seen the the hearse locker. You've prob probably come over from my Instagram channel, which has a bit of all sorts about coaching and life in general. So I figured I'd start doing a, a weekly vlog. My return to rugby um, officially starts next week. Our pre-season starts next week. And I just wanted to use it as an opportunity to go behind the scenes, introduce you to the family. Here we've got Fen who's my little Italian greyhound. We've got the kids, we've got my boyfriend, friends, family. We've got lots of starring people. So really looking forward to introducing you to the life of Keegan Hurst. So yeah, here we go. I'm just going on a dog walk with Fen now. And then I've got some, some work to do this afternoon. So nothing really exciting on day one, but I guess that's what vlogs are about, right? See, Fen wears clothes because he's an Italian greyhound. So he gets really cold because he doesn't have much fur. So he usually has something on when we're, when we're in the house or when we're out. But as you can see, West Yorkshire is a beautiful place. Always reminds me of home when I see the rolling green hills. All right, Fenny. This is mine and Fen's usual route where we come, come walking pretty much every day. So we're very lucky. You are a bit exposed to the elements, so when it's windy, rainy, you know about it, but that's the north of England for you, so very lucky. Two very happy boys. I'm all showering everything now. I'm in the office. I'll go through the whiteboard with you later on. Just got some calls to do with some clients. I've got a workshop later on this after uh, this evening with, with clients as well. We always put workshops on covering various different topics. Tonight, we're gonna do an Ask Me Anything where the guys can come on and literally quiz me about anything. So it's things to do with training, lifestyle, but also the, the other stuff that comes along with it, like managing relationships and there's, there's all sorts. Sometimes I have the answers, sometimes I don't, um, but we haven't done one of those for a while. So really looking forward to that. But yeah, got a couple of catch up calls with clients and then I've got some uh, programming to do this afternoon. So gonna be kind of stuck to, stuck to the desk here. I've got a standing desk as you can see. Uh, so I'm gonna be stuck to that for, for the next few hours, but looking forward to it. So I've spent the afternoon in my office. I've just been building a program. We're gonna be launching a program inside a PTIQ called the Santa Shred. It's like every every quarter, every four, every three months or so, we launch like a program within the program that people can either opt into and they'll have different focuses. So in autumn, we had the Anabolic Autumn program, which focused on strength. In summer, we had the Beach Body program, which focused on just really ramping up fat loss and muscle building. The thing is with these programs, they're not always sustainable. That's why we do them for like brief times where we kind of ramp everything up. And we've just, I've just created the, the Santa Shred program. It does what it says on the tin. So I'll just talk you through my whiteboard over here. Just, this is where the magic happens. So here you can see down here, we've generally got my, that's what my, uh, schedule kind of looks like and I fill bits in and then here we've got obviously loads of goals so that work rhythm was that I had to rejig everything one of our coaches has just left so we're in the process of getting a new one I could kind of put a tentative cross through that build a Santa shred program that's what I've just been doing this MAD that you see over here this is our live event that we're doing we do those twice a year we've got one on the 3rd of December coming up so we're just finalizing the workshop, the workbooks, the calendars. These are these are jo jobs for me to do around the house. Um, and this is work stuff. That hit 110 kilos, that's a little goal I've had for myself. But as you can see where I've rubbed stuff out, it keeps me busy. I'm a big fan of writing everything down. And there's a picture of the kids, just a little reminder. So it's 8.30, um, I've just got in from shopping. I did our workshop earlier, went really, really well. And yeah, I just thought I've got a bit of time so I'm gonna nip out, go shopping. I've kind of done everything for the day now and I'm gonna chill. My shopping basically consists of a lot of meat and veggies. And if I ever see meat that's discounted, I always buy it and then just freeze it because meat's expensive, you need to get your protein in. And it's a really easy way to, to do it. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna get my PJs on, I'm gonna put the camera on, I'm gonna chill out. So that's the end of, Day one. Morning guys, I hope you're well. So I've just woken up, 
um, just feeding Fen and then gonna go for a bit of a walk, go do some walk bike in the garage, I'll show you the, the garage of, of doom. Um, it's full of crap, it's where I do my, my cardio in there. I'm gonna go for a walk, grab a coffee, get on with that. I've got a pretty quiet day with work today because um, I got a load done yesterday. But I've got piano lesson, and I'm off my haircut as well, so I'm looking forward to both of those. So just been to get a coffee. There's a Dunkin' Donuts on the end of the road, and it's not a nice walk. You can see that KFC in the background, Dunkin'. Um, it's not a nice walk, particularly it's on a main road, but a good walk there and back to hotel, get my steps in and coffee at the end. Oh well, halfway there, uh, before I get home is a nice little reward. Something I always say to clients is try and you know create rewards that are, are going to entice you, and then it becomes just becomes a habit so yeah just spill all over myself just getting um, getting some steps in um, i'm gonna do a bit of bike i'll show you around the garage it's really exciting so welcome to my garage as you can see we have supplies we have bikes we have a load of boxes uh now that stuff is there's a bath um stuff for the bathroom suite uh, the, that's the bathroom suite for two bathrooms that are getting done at the end of the month over in the corner there you can see my watt bike so i'm just going to sit on there and get some I get some cardio done i've got the ipad on there so i just sit and i do i watch a bit of an episode again it's just a bit of a reward for doing something that can be a little bit boring so i'm gonna get about 40 minutes done on there get showered up crack on my work So this morning I got a delivery. Um, I ordered some new boxes. Now these, I, I like this is not paid. I buy these and they're, they're not cheap, but they're the best training boxes I've ever used. Um, I'll open them for you. They're beyond bog ones. They're good because the materials like, I don't know what's the best way to describe it. It's like, um, it's not it's not fully cotton. It's it's like a silk, it's silk, it's, it's definitely not silk. But they're, they're really cool, they're really comfy. They're the best boxes I've ever had for, for training or just, just for general comfort. Would highly recommend so much so that I got, I got two packs to keep me stocked up. So I'm just about to go into my piano lesson. I've been learning piano for about two years now. I've not been practicing as much as I should, if I'm honest with you. I've got music, I've got music books, I've got, I, I use a, an app on the piano called Simple Piano, which is very good. Currently learning uh, Moonlight Sonata, which is a bit dull and it's harder than it, you think. At the minute, I just haven't got anything to get my teeth into. Uh, I did Jurassic Park, you know, the theme tune. Na, 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 that one, which was very good, difficult. Again, still not fully nailed it, but this is the thing you just kind of keep ticking over and chipping away at it. But I've not had as much time lately. We've been really busy with work and, and everything that's been going on. So, and my piano also needs retuning. So it, it doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound awful, but it doesn't quite sound right. And it makes me not want to play it. So yeah, I'm gonna, my piano teacher's Darren, I'm gonna go into his now, and then I'm gonna grab a coffee and then we'll go get my hair cut. So I've just finished my piano lesson where we were discussing music theory. Who knew that you would be listening to me, Keegan Ernst, rugby player, coach, talking about music theory in Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. So we have, I don't know if you can see it here. We have an F sharp, an F double sharp, which if you, when you sharpen something, you go up a semitone, which is, so if you don't know the piano, you know, you have a white and a white, and when you have a, it's the next, essentially the next note up. So some notes have a black note in between, some don't. So when you sharpen something, you go up. When you flatten something, you go down one. So a double sharp is up, up, so it becomes a G. So I was asking, why is it written as an F sharp, as an F double sharp, which is very difficult to read when you're reading the music, as opposed to just putting a G sharp in. So then we discussed music theory about scales and how everything has to correspond to a, a letter in alphabetical sequential order. You can't have two somethings. So you can't have a, an F and then a, and then another type of F or a G and then another type of G, which it would happen in a G sharp major um scale so there you go so that was interesting and i do like the music theory and to be fair to darren he's very clued up he knows what he's talking about and even he said he said the best thing to do with this part of this piece is just learn it he said because when i look at it i can't read it as you play and if you're trying to play at speed you know without any pause and things so some pieces of music you just have to learn certain parts of the part i was talking about jurassic park there's a part in there where you just it, it, you can't 
keep up with the music because you know, there's a lot going on so you just have to like learn those parts yeah it's the muscle memory it all comes it's, it's good and I, I do really enjoy piano i really enjoy it maybe one day i'll um, record me playing it now i'm off to get my hair cut this is liam cutting my hair look he does a terrible job <laughs> look at his owner yeah. don't come at me like this it's on it there i've got the note of my hair it seems to be that day every day I come in. <laughs> Hair did, uh, you can't really see it, but uh, Liam's, I let him have free reign with it. He knows what he's doing, he's good. I always get into him, give him, give him a load of grief. Uh, he's a big football fan and he's always talking about getting in shape and never actually does anything. However, after um, getting my hair cut, I'm just treating myself to a lolly. So I'm going to do this. I'm not pick, normally pick the kids up on a Wednesday, but I'm not picking Fletcher up today. I'm getting Taylor at four o'clock because she's got rehearsals because they are doing in a musical at school and she's in that. So I'm picking her up at four and then I am taking her to uh, the Women's World Cup. England are playing later this evening. So me, Taylor and her friend are going over to that. So yeah, just got a few hours till we're going to go sit in a coffee shop and get a bit of work done. Here we are, we are just at, uh, there's Taylor, uh, we are just at Edinburgh Stadium to watch the women's rugby. Um, we're just queuing up to get some food. Taylor's, Taylor, what are you getting? Chips and gravy. Ruby's getting cheesy chips. She's, she's no press, no press. Um, I'm going to abstain because I'm being good. I'm just going to nick a chip with Taylor's. Um, I'll show you some of the game. So I'm home, as you can see, I'm back. It is uh, well after 10, so very late school night. The girls had a great time. It was really nice to see all Taylor's teammates there. For most of them, it was the first game of rugby. Not Taylor, because obviously she's been to watch me, so it was nice to see Taylor explaining the rules and when there were things I didn't understand, they were asking me. Um, so it was really nice to see England won. Um, absolutely smashed PNG. It was a really, really good game. So yeah, really, really good day today. Um, tomorrow up early to take I'll be doing some walk bike and then taking Taylor to school pretty much got the day to myself tomorrow which I'm actually really looking forward to because today has been absolutely non-stop so yeah good night morning guys it is very bright <laughs> it's about quarter past six in the morning I am up early because I've got to take Taylor to school and I wanted to get some um, cardio in early on with me with my days uh, you know, things change with what I'm doing with if I'm taking the kids to school, when I've got calls with work, what's going on. So there's a lot of change and variation in my days, but there's a lot of things that I always keep the same and I just move them around. So it's essentially like jigsaw pieces that I have every single day, whether it's the gym, whether it's going for a walk, whether it's getting some cardio in. And I don't do them all every day, but I do them most days. So it's really important for me that I plan. And some days... I have to get up early to get them in, otherwise I wouldn't get them in. I don't have to do it every day, but today on a th on Thursdays, because the kids always stay on a Wednesday, I always have to get up early if I want to get my cardio in, because otherwise it just ends up being too much of a squeeze. And I end up then deprioritizing myself and putting other things first. And something I'm really passionate about and something that I, I talk to my clients about all the time is that you have to prioritize yourself. You have to prioritize your health, your well-being because if you don't nobody else will and for me as a as an athlete as a coach as a dad as someone who wants to move pain free like as someone who enjoys feeling good about themselves prioritizing my health allows me to then be better at, at, at helping other people so it's it's something that i'm really really passionate about even if it means getting up at six o'clock to sit on a bike uh, which is what it means today now i am training harder than usual at the minute because i'm getting ready for uh, I've been doing a bit of a, a diet uh, and getting ready for a bit of a photo shoot and also the start of uh, rugby. So my training volume is a lot higher. So the amount of training that I'm doing, whether it's cardio, whether it's gym. But do you know what? I'm, you just you just got to find a way to make it work. And that's what it is. And that's why it's important to be organised. I plan my days every single day. I plan my week. When I plan my day for tomorrow, I'll show you. I'll show you um, what I do. So yeah, I'm just going to do about half an hour on here this morning. Get, get a shower get Taylor sorted and get her to school. So here we go, as you can see, it's still dark outside. <laughs> so there's been a change of plan. Taylor was, she was ill yesterday. She wasn't very well, but she was, she was okay. This morning she's woke up and 
she looks and feels like death warmed up. So I've given her the day off school. That was an easy decision to make, to be fair. Because for me, certainly as a parent, thinking about, you know, am I doing, are you doing the right thing with your kids? Are you too lenient? Are you too harsh? Do you give them too much? Do you not give them enough? It's a, a constant, like, in a dialogue with yourself. Like, am I, do, am I doing the right thing as a parent? What do they need versus what do they want? And I think, you know, going through, going through life, like everybody, as a coach, all my clients have self-doubts, whether they can achieve the goals, whether they deserve to achieve the goals, whether they know, you know, whether it's the right thing for them. Everybody on the planet has self-doubts. And I think a lot of people see that as like a negative, like I shouldn't have self-doubts, I should know what I'm doing. Everybody's, you know, when you see people being successful, you think, oh, they know exactly what they're doing and they're striving towards it. But every single person has self-doubts. I think people look at me as, you know, I've been an athlete, I've, I run a successful coaching business. I'd like to think I've got healthy, happy relationships with, with friends, family, kids. I have self-doubt every single day. But I think the difference is when you let it stop you, when it becomes like crippling self-doubt, I think that's that's the problem. Self-doubt's healthy. It's, it's like a feedback system. Is this right? Did it work? And just like asking yourself, what was the outcome really? And, and it's really easy to get distorted on this kind of stuff. So if you're, if you're tired, if you're hungry, if something bad has just happened, it's really easy for us to look at things and go, everything's crap and, and I don't want, and I'm, I'm no good. And, and then you have a sleep on it and you think everything's better. So I think that's when it comes to self doubt, about anything particularly with parenting it's just look at your track record do you generally make good decisions are you generally right if not then what needs to change what what can be better how can you get better at it and just looking at it analytically and it it might sound quite boring that like um or it's just all numbers and uh, but it's it's not it's just that's that's what life is you get you do something you get feedback on it whether it worked, you like the result or not, and then you either change it or stay the same. That is what life is. That is what feedback is. That's what progress is or not progress. And that's why they say that, you know, that, just look at that sunrise as well. It's a very nice sunrise. You know, they say that, I've completely lost my train of thought there. Um, I'm sure it'll come back to me. But yeah, so self-doubt, everybody has it. I certainly have it, but I don't let it stop me. And I have things in place to help me manage it. I have people around me who I can, who I trust. I, if there's something that I want to achieve that I don't know how to do it, I, I get, I employ somebody or pay somebody who's done it before better than me. I, you know, I've, a, I've got coaches, I've got business mentors, I've got, I've had people help me with social media, all sorts of stuff. Like no man is self-made or woman is self-made. And I think people forget that. Like you see this on TikTok and, and Instagram. Everybody thinks that they've done it all themselves. And you, know, you see the kid from Gymshark who's worth however much. He's had people around. Yeah, he got it started. He had a great idea, but he had people around him and he was, you know, he asked for help. Um, and that's how you mitigate self-doubt. So yeah, there's just a little ramble while I'm rambling. Hey, I like that. So yeah, ch pl change of plans today. I don't have to take tail to school, which is, I'd planned all my day out. It's kind of changed that now. Giving me more time, so... Um, I'm going to go for a walk now rather than later on. I'm going to get back, I'm going to do a bit of work. Just make sure everybody's okay. It's Thursday today, so just checking in that everybody's kind of all set for the week. We've got our live event coming up in December, which I'm really looking forward to. And I've got some workshops to finish in touch as to those. And then I can start crossing things off my list on my whiteboard then, which is very satisfying. I've got to get the gym in today. And yeah, uh, other, other than that, I'm not too hard pressed today. So I think I might get time to play on my new game. God of War, Ragnarok it's called. I've had a PlayStation 5, a great when it came out, I've hardly played it. So I'm looking forward to that, rolling back the years to being a big kid. So it's on, sound's still on, then it comes, so I've pressed it then. So it's like every time it changes. I'm on my way to the gym. It's Friday morning, uh, I've already, I've been up early, I've been doing some work, just trying to get in front for the weekend because Got a few things on today, got a few calls uh, with prospective clients. We do a catch up, like a coffee with Keegs call, we call it. Uh, with clients who just have a bit of a chat. That's uh, lunchtime. And then I've got to pick the kids up from school. And then this evening, we are all going to, Joel's coming up and me and the kids and Joel are going to the Rugby League World Cup semi-final. It's Australia and New Zealand, so yeah, looking forward to that.
hate this machine. So I finished in the gym, I'm in the lift. I did, I did take the stairs before, but I just forgot my keys in the gym. So I had to come all the way back down. So I'm not doing the stairs twice, come on. Yeah, just finished up a leg session. I've got one more gym session to do tomorrow and then I'm done for the week. At the minute I'm training five times a week. Um, two leg sessions and three upper body sessions. I'm preparing for a, a bit of a photo shoot. Not for any particular reason other than to hold myself accountable. You know, me and my coach agreed to it. Because I was speaking about this yesterday on Instagram and TikTok is that it's your body is a representation of your standards and your values well it is for me anyway and hard work discipline structure organization people who've got a, a, a good body are organized um, because they have to plan their time and you know it does take time and effort and so i was talking about yesterday how our body is more than an ornament it's an instrument it's something to be used not something to be looked at because i posted a before and after which is not the finished article yet getting ready for the um for the photo shoot people you know there were lots of people saying oh i prefer the left i prefer the left i prefer the left the before photo where i, I didn't look bad i was a bit overweight but I, I didn't look bad it wasn't like i was in desperate need to lose weight it just i did it for me but it was more to do with how you feel than how you look if you i'll, I'll put the picture in but if you on the, the, the before photo, I'm 124 kilos. On the one after, I'm 114, so 10 kilos down. Like, and I'm six foot four, so I can carry it, but 124 kilos is a hell of a lot of weight to go through your joints, you know, just walking, training. It just felt out of breath, sluggish, you know, not energized, not productive, just a bit meh. And just having that impetus and momentum to, to build and go forward and have something to work towards. That's what I do with my clients. And I feel like I would be a hypocrite if I, you know, A, if I didn't have a coach and B, if I didn't have something that I was working towards. And it's not always going to be, you know, a photo shoot does sound like it's for the aesthetic, but it's more the process of go, of getting there. You know, the discipline, the structure, the 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 effort that it takes and learning to say no to things but you know it's into all and we're getting towards christmas you know we're into well into november now and there's a lot of socials and people want to go drinking that comfort food you know when you're staying and it's it's really easy to just compromise your goals and i think it's really important that you don't compromise your goals you can compromise the timeline sometimes you know maybe you want to for me do a photo shoot maybe if something was to come up it's not and it's not the right time then that's fine but don't fully sack it off just change your timeline there's lots of ways to skin a cat and that's why it's really important i think to, to have a coach because it helps you zoom out and take a look at, at the big picture when sometimes you get caught up in the you know the day-to-day -day, the minutiae this is your vehicle that carries you this is you and this is the vehicle that carries you around and you have to look at it you have to you know how it feels and who wants to be in pain who doesn't want to like how they how they look who doesn't want to feel sexy and and smart people always say to me oh it's it might seem a bit vain that i want to you know i want to feel sexy absolutely show me a person who doesn't want to feel sexy i'll show you a liar so there you go there's a bit of a rat i'm gonna get back i'm gonna do some have a shower get uh, get some food and um get on with the rest of my day let me know what you think about that so i've just had a call uh client uh, not been able to make a call so i'm going to use this opportunity to clean the back garden up because as you can see we've got loads of trees near the back of our garden and all the leaves blowing here and there's all the dogs and everything so just going to give it a tidy up while i've got some time well it's not quite as clean as i would have liked it because it's it's really windy and it keeps picking up and then every time i got the leaves into a pile it would just blow them everywhere so yeah this, this is as good as it's going to get for now i think until i get a, a day where there's no wind but it's much improved i can actually see the grass now well i say grass artificial grass so what have we got fletch talk us through it fireball jawbreakers fireball jawbreakers and what are we going to do um, try one each and see who makes the biggest reaction. Okay, well, let's record it then and then we can see. And Taylor's, go Taylor's gonna be the judge, yeah? Get Do you want me to film this? Get in, Fletch. Ready? Three, two, one. I don't think this is gonna be a very exciting reaction. <laughs> They're really hard. They're not even hot. They're not. Sorry. <laughs>
the same time now. Everybody's here down the road. They're just about to kick off, they've just done the hacker. It's buzzing, it's a good atmosphere. It's going to be a good game. Say hi, kids. There we go, we've just finished. Uh, Australia won 16 14. It was a really good game, wasn't it, Tay? Yeah. Really good game. I don't think Joel and Fletcher were particularly interested, but it was very good. It's Fletcher. Silly. Um, yeah, really good game. We're going to head home now. As you can see, it's very busy. Um, so we're probably going to be sat in traffic for ages. Morning, guys. It's Saturday morning. It's 6.23. I'm in the car. I'm just about to head to the gym. We had a great night last night at the rugby. It was a bit late, but by the time we got to sleep, didn't really sleep that well. And Saturday is when the kids are here always busy. Uh, I've got Taylor's football on Saturday morning, so we all go to that. Uh, Saturday afternoons, she's got uh, acting class. So I've got a gym session to get in. So everybody's in bed asleep. So I'm going to get up, go to the gym, get that done. Now, I've probably sacrificed a bit of sleep here to get this gym session in, which I don't normally do. It's not a good, it's not certainly not sustainable, but I think to make sure that I get some quality time with the kids, with Joe, over the weekend, it's just easier to get up and get it done today. Um, it's only one day. Tomorrow, I don't have any sessions to do. Um, I'm gonna make sure I get some work. I've got some work to do this afternoon just to get everything finished off for the week and then I'm done. So yeah, looking. this is an, an open body session, so I'm looking forward to getting that done. And it's also really satisfying on a weekend to get up, not hungover, just go and, get you get a, get a workout done and know that you're in front of everybody who's not done one i always think of it like that there's no what is it what's the saying uh, it's never crowded on the extra mile there you go so you can tell it's early because not only is it quiet it's really quiet the music's quiet as well here we are soccer mom saturday this is joel wood everybody this is my boyfriend you might not know who he is this is weird that you're vlogging and I'm not. Yeah, there you go, look. Yeah. And just before you all start thinking that I've nicked Joel's thing, he actually encouraged me to do it. So, I did. so I you look I really short. You look really short. <laughs> don't you? <laughs> Why do I look so small? I think it's because you're down a hill. Yeah. Um, we're, we're not just wandering around a child's car uh, <laughs> playground there. We're at Taylor, Taylor's Got Football Match. Uh, I just put some diesel in the car and. Got your card stuck. The card got stuck in the machine and I tr obviously tried to pull it out and a lady came. So Joe went and got the lady, she came out, tried pulling it as if I'd not tried that and then came back out with some pliers. And then it worked. And then she, she, we, we got it out. But, uh, That's what happens when you have a Metal Amex card, when you're bougie AF. Yeah. It's not mine, it's the businesses. <laughs> so yeah, we are here, we're queer. It's not actually that cold, is it? A little bit cold, huh? but that's because I'm southern. He's southern. Um, so we're gonna go watch this enthralling game. Joel, you love sports now, don't you? I can't wait to watch the passes, the side kicks, the, the, side the kicks. head pumps. Those. Headers. Headers. Joel was, we were at the, Joel was uh, unimpressed with the rugby last night. I wasn't, I enjoyed it. You said you were, oh, you were unimpressed with the hacker. Oh yeah, I'm impressed with the hacker. My favourite was when they start, some of the players got into a fight. Um, an Aussie shoved an, a New Zealandy, and New Zealandy. it was so good. That was my favourite part. Okay, not not it, not of any of the spot. Um, <laughs> it was so. fun though. I liked it. I don't understand it, but I liked it. Sounds like when you're exploring your sexuality, doesn't it? <laughs> True. Hey guys, so Taylor's team lost uh, three two. It was a really good game. Um, I have just been working, getting finished up with programming for the guys. Uh, a lot of them are doing the Santa Shred program, which is like a, a four week program that, that some of them are doing. As you can see from the list that I showed you the the other day, there's loads of stuff that I've crossed off. So I'm going to clear that, resort that out and then I can replan next week. The good thing about having a list and keeping it, and this is the important thing, you need to keep your lists because we can get loads of stuff done and then we forget because life's busy. And then we feel like we've still not done anything. So actually looking at that now, I can sit here and say, I've had a really productive week. I've got a lot done. I'm really pleased. Um, I can have a bit of downtime now for the rest of the weekend. And um, yeah, I'm chuffed. So I'm gonna go on a walk with Joel and the dogs in a bit and then I'm gonna wrap this vlog up, I think. But I'll show you a bit of the bit of the woods near me because they're very pretty. You join us on a walk on a on a beautiful autumnal afternoon. We're just gonna come for a get our steps in, aren't we Joel? We are. 
Oh, it's nice you're vlogging. I'm taking the weekend off from vlogging, so it's a yeah, nice well, break. I'm finishing up, guys, here, so <laughs> I can tell you that the rest of the day will consist of Taylor does have drama class that I have to. F Dad is a taxi service. And then it will consist of what we got strictly. Strictly, I'm a celeb. What and else? Something the else. Crown. The Crown. The new series of The Crown. We're going to start that. And we will have a glass or two of something bubbly. I hope you've enjoyed my first vlog. I don't know if this is going to be a success or an absolute dive. I guess who's been tasked with editing it? Guess who volunteered to edit it? Wait, wait, what Eddie said earlier, oh, but Joel's encouraged me. I haven't forced him to. It's just been a mutual thing where he's like, I'd quite like to vlog. And I'm like, go for it. I'm happy to help you. Well, I've it toyed with been... the idea for a long time. Then I was like, oh, it just feels like a lot of asshole. And then you said you'd edit it. And I was like, <laughs> I have a dog and bath. So. Yeah, so we get a vibe. Yeah. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, what do we say, Joe? Subscribe, give like. like. Yeah, yeah, give it a like. Just do all the things. You know what you're doing. You watch YouTube. Um, cheers guys.